Hey everybody, it's Beth. Welcome to Infinite Garden. This week I'm responding to a viewer question. The question is, what are some of the challenges that come along with gray hair? And I'm happy to talk about those from my perspective. If you're new to my channel, welcome. On this channel, we celebrate self-acceptance, authentic personal style, and sometimes the expansion of consciousness. If that sounds like the type of thing you'd enjoy, I hope you subscribe and stay. I think this is such a good question. And before I jump into the challenges, I was able to think of three that I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted just to repeat a message I've been sharing on my channel, which is that ditching the dye and embracing your silver hair is a lot easier. I've talked about this in other videos, but the act of dyeing my hair every four weeks became an incredible burden and hassle for me. And ever since I ditched the dye, my life has gotten much, much easier. So although today I'm going to talk about some of the challenges, I just wanted to repeat the fact that I find for me, this choice has been very freeing and relieving of burdens and challenges. But as we know, there are two sides to every coin and I'm here to talk about the parts that are challenging. The first challenge, and this was mentioned by the viewer in the comment, is yellowing. The yellowing of the hair can be caused by things like sun exposure, heat styling, pollution, or using products that are colored and leave deposits of dye in your hair. Those are some of the ways that your hair can turn yellow, and there are ways to combat all of these. I think it can be helpful to learn what about your lifestyle might be contributing to some of the yellowing and trying to combat it at its source. So if you know that you get a lot of sun exposure, you might consider wearing a hat or maybe looking for a hair care product that includes UV protectant. If it's due to pollution, you might want to add a clarifying shampoo to your routine. And if it's from heat styling, you need to get really serious about using heat protectant, both to prevent the yellowing and to protect your hair. Gray hair can be drier, more coarse, and more brittle. And so if you are using heat styling, you have to use heat protectant. So all of those methods can help you to prevent the yellowing, but if you are experiencing yellowing all the same, of course you can use purple products. I know that's something that a lot of people have talked about on YouTube. There's a lot of great videos. This channel also includes three previous videos where I reviewed different purple hair care products. And I continue to research the field. I have a little container here of different products that I currently have in my arsenal that I'm testing out. And they include all types of products. I'm not going to go into all of these in depth, but if you haven't yet explored purple toned hair care products, I wanted to show you these just to give a sense of the breadth of availability on the market. So depending on your hair type and how you like to style your hair, you might be able to find a purple toned product somewhere in the mix. Often the first product mentioned is a purple shampoo. I am still working through my Shu Yuomura purple shampoo, but I also have just here a little sample pack from Verb. This is one of the products that I haven't tried yet, but I'm going to bring this with me on an upcoming trip. This sample packet has both a purple shampoo and a mask. Most of these products seem to have been formulated to combat the brassiness that comes from dyeing your hair platinum. My first purple hair care product review was about Kerastase's Blonde Absolu line, which was something that I relied on when I was dyeing my hair platinum blonde before I made the transition to silver. And I found that once the blonde was out of my hair and I just had my natural silver, that that product line was a little strong for me. It was perfect for combating my platinum blonde brass, but it was too strong for the kind of like light degree of yellowing I was experiencing on my natural silver hair. So as I'm going through testing some of these products, I'm playing with which ones are very, very strong and which ones are a little bit more subtle. I also have a couple of large samples from the brand Amica. This is their shampoo and this one is a styling cream. So far I have liked these Amica products. Today I used their conditioning mask on my hair. I started today with a clarifying shampoo. I used the Shu Yuomura clear shampoo, not the purple one, the clear one. I used that to really deeply cleanse my hair. It really needed it. And then I put the Amica conditioning mask in my hair for a while. And then I finished up with a Sisley repair mask on top of that just to really add moisture. That's what I did today because I was noticing a little bit of 
yellowness kind of on this part of my hair. It could have been from heat styling. I did use a little bit of a flat iron last night before I went out. I don't know if that caused it, but I was noticing it myself and I did find that that conditioning mask from Amika seems to have brightened up my hair nicely. It looks really good. And I don't think it was too drying. Sometimes I felt like the Kerastase one was a little too drying. Earlier this year, I posted a review of Aveda's line, Blonde Revival. I did ultimately purchase a full size of this conditioning treatment and I have been using this. This is something that I do feel is subtle enough that if I do want to sit in the bath and put this conditioner in my hair, wrap it up with a clip and let it sit for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I do find that this particular conditioner does not deposit too much purple in my hair. It does not turn my hair purple. That may be different for you. It kind of depends on how your hair receives color, but for me, I have been really enjoying this particular product. I like a lot of what Aveda stands for. They tend to use natural products. They don't test on animals. They are converting to sustainable energy, including wind power. So I do like supporting this brand and I do think that this particular product is subtle enough that it works really well on natural silver hair, not just platinum blonde hair. You can also find purple products in heat protectants. This is kind of interesting. This is a pale lavender from the Kerastase Blonde Absolute line. This is a heat protectant. So this is something that you would put in your hair after the shower and before heat styling. It adds a very, very subtle lavender effect and it does help with heat protectant. I think this is a good product. I talked about this product in my video that I made about Kerastase, I think last year, and I have repurchased at least once one of these. I think this is great and a really good option. If you're finding that the shampoos and conditioners are too intense, you might like to incorporate a lavender or purple product in your styling care. This is the last one I'll talk about. I haven't used it much. This is a large sample from Bumble and Bumble. This is their tone enhancing leave-in. This is a spray that you spray into damp hair. I've only tried this one when I have been wearing my hair curly. I don't think it has any heat protectant qualities. I think it's just a toning product and normally when I spray this in, it's usually after I've also done a purple shampoo or a purple conditioning mask. So I can't really report out yet on how effective I think this is, but I do think it's interesting that there are so many different types of products available that still provide that purple toning. So if you haven't found the product yet, that's best for you. I recommend kind of doing what I'm doing and maybe going in search of some large samples and giving some products a good hard try before jumping in. There's lots on the market. The second challenge I wanted to talk about is the increased appearance of messy hair. This may be a personal perception that I have of my own hair. I don't know if this is true or not. I have felt since I've gone gray that when my hair is messy, it looks so much messier than it used to. Like I said, that may not be true, but that's how it feels to me. If I have gone a couple of days between washes, especially when I'm wearing my hair curly and it starts to look really wild, I feel like it's just like next level wild. And so one of the things that I've done, like if I can't start from scratch and I need to leave the house and still manage my hair, I've been relying more on really beautiful hair accessories. This is a clip I found at Nordstrom that I really like. It has a pearlized top, and then I also have one that's just plain in plain gold. I wasn't sure at first what the right color was, so I started with this color because I thought it might look good with my silver hair, and then I found that I actually don't mind a gold clip in my silver hair. Some people might not like that, but I do. I really like wearing gold toned jewelry, generally speaking, and I find that it can look great with silver hair. So what I'll do, sometimes is just, you know, I'll take my hair back like this and just twist it and then kind of tuck it and I can secure it with this clip. I hope you can see that. <laughs> I hope that was on camera. But anyway, I just did that really fast and maybe I would style it slightly differently if I were actually going out. But I have found that rather than like a big plastic jaw clip that I use when I'm going around the house, I have found that if I'm leaving and I'm concerned about my hair looking messy, a chic and beautiful hair clip can make me feel a little more put together. So that's been one of my hacks as well. 
I continue to look for beautiful hair accessories. I'm also a big fan of scarves of all sorts. So I didn't used to wear a lot of scarves in my hair. I've always liked it and I've always been a scarf person, but I have found that generally speaking, I enjoy wearing scarves more now than ever. And here are just some examples from my collection. This is a very simple kind of inexpensive scarf I bought at this store called Global Village in Duluth. It has kind of like, it's like one of those sort of bohemian shops that sells things from all over the world. And I found this one, I thought it looked really cute, really pretty bright, vibrant colors. And it's just the right length to do a double wrap and then tie behind. This is another fun one in my collection. This is a vintage 1970s Italian silk scarf. I bought this in South Beach, Miami from like a, a street vendor who had a little booth. I thought this was so cute and I have found this one to be very wearable. I'll post a picture of myself wearing this just the other day to walk my dog. I really like the bright colors and I like a little bit of the geometric lines that come along with this one. I find that if I feel like my hair is starting to look messy or just generally kind of washed out, a very vibrant, beautiful scarf can pull it together. This is a beautiful silk scarf that was hand dyed. I bought that from an artist locally at her shop. This one is really beautiful. It has kind of like rusty and lavender colors. I find that this one, it's very long. This one can give me kind of a nice, a nice soft effect that I think is very flattering with my particular skin tone. This one's a little wrinkly because I've worn it recently, but this is a twill silk scarf from the brand St. John. I bought this from Saks. I actually talked about a scarf like this in my fall trends video last year. I showed the one like this that was more burgundy toned. I ended up getting the greenish one and I'm really happy about that. I find that those, again, those bright green colors here really can bring my hair alive and bring my complexion alive and make my hair feel a little less messy and a little more put together. So when I feel like my hair is looking really messy, I've been leaning into beautiful hair accessories and beautiful scarves to help me feel more put together and a little more polished. The third challenge that I have found is that gray hair has significantly changed what I would refer to as my style vibe. I feel as though it impacts both the colors that I want to wear and just generally the types of clothes and cuts I want to wear. Gray hair offers a very mature vibe. Gray hair is symbolic of maturity and age, and that is a very specific vibe. And so for me, I have noticed that that added like element of maturity and age has made me want to counterbalance that in my clothing in some ways. I have noticed that, like for instance, this blouse, I have been very interested in wearing kind of airier, lighter, more delicate fabrics to balance out the age. I've been less interested in like heavier, thicker materials. I've also been paying more attention to how I look head to toe more than I used to. And I've been going down, frankly, a bit of a, like a style rabbit hole. Have you guys been doing this too? I've really been exploring the Kibbe body typing system. I don't know if I've mentioned that on my channel before, but I've spent a lot of time looking at this. Let me know in the comments if you guys are also interested in this or if you've never heard of it. David Kibbe is a man who is alive still and he published a book in the 80s called Metamorphosis where he looked at body shape and size. He organized body types, not as like an apple pear triangle, but based on body architecture. So you fall somewhere in a spectrum from tall to petite and your bone type is either maybe sharp and angular or maybe blunted and more squared off. And you may be very lean and muscular or you may be very curvy and fleshy. And depending on those types of like body characteristics, you may fall into a particular category and when you know what your category is there are suggestions for which types of clothes might flatter your body architecture best and also if you wanted to go outside of your category you can create really stunning effects by going against your lines if you wanted to look edgier or more dramatic you can play with that as well i've been spending a lot of time learning about this and looking at myself i've been taking tons of pictures of myself in different garments that are in my closet and trying to get a sense of what it is i want to wear i haven't gone through this kind of like deep dive style overhaul in I would say like 15 years. I think in my early 30s, 
when I was getting deeper into my professional career. I wasn't sure how I wanted to present myself in a professional context now that I wasn't in my 20s anymore. So in my early 30s, I kind of went through a similar exercise. Now I'm finding that because of my gray hair, I'm finding myself again, wanting to really do an overhaul and look at my style. I don't really have any conclusions to share with you today, but just to say I'm deep within it. I'm really going through that right now. Would you please let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make some more videos about this? Those videos don't always do as well on my channel, so I get the message that people aren't interested in that content, so I'm reluctant to make it, but I would really like to. The shopping I've been doing this fall for myself has been informed by this research that I've been doing. I am by no means a Kibbe expert, but I am very interested in this right now and I wonder if you might be too. So please let me know in the comments. So there you have it. Those are three challenges I have come across since I've decided to go gray. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Please let me know. You know I love to hear from you. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well out there and I hope you have a great week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.